Welcome to the teaching ministry of Rev. Daryl Baker, pastor of Christian Faith Fellowship. Pastor Baker is fulfilling the call of God on his life to preach the Word of God without compromise. Raising up disciples who through faith in God will have a powerful impact on our world. May you be blessed through the message that Pastor Baker has to share with you today. May God's very best be yours. Part three, developing your spirit, man. We're going to start getting into details tonight about how we do it. We've, we've spent a couple services already touching on the importance of why we need to do so. And I want to go back real quick to our foundation verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. How many remember my assignment I gave you for this month? <clears throat> for 30 days. Every single time. Every single time it comes to mind about this series, you say, I am a spirit, I have a soul, I live in a body. You ought to say it like multiple times when you think about it. And I'm going to tell you, it's vital you do. It's, it's, this isn't mind over matter if you're new to Christianity. There, this is not mind over matter. But the Bible's clear. The Bible says that you can have what you say if you believe it in your heart. When the more you speak it, the more you declare it, the more you're hearing it, the more you're feeding your spirit on what the Word of God says. So it's very imper imperative to your development and growth in this that you do. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, Now may the God of peace, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now again, this is telling us that God wants to see our entire spirit, soul, and body preserved, protected, kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's some things in there we got to do about that. But the good part about it is God's the one that empowers you to do it. We're not doing anything in Christianity off of our strength. But at the same time, you know, some of this modern day stuff saying, you know, we don't really have to do anything. We just got to believe. Well, the Bible says, though, faith without works is dead. You can believe all day long, but if there's no corresponding action that goes along with that, the faith isn't working for you. There's some stuff you got to do. And, and I'll tell you, the detriment to the day of what we're seeing in the way of a lot of false teachings is it's not always so much what they are saying. It's what they aren't saying. It's what they're leaving off. You know, uh, partial truth still means there's partial error. Where there's partial error, there's deception, yeah. period. Uh, you don't want partial truth. We want the whole truth. And the problem is a lot of the modern day things that are being spoken of aren't necessarily all bad in themselves, but they're leaving a part out. And I'll guarantee you, man, it's just like, you know, if you want a good apple pie, don't leave the apples out. Right? Or don't leave the crust or don't leave all the other stuff out. But, but the thing of it is there's a, lot, there's a lot being left out. So, number one, I want to just point out again what this whole series is about. This is about learning to do what Scripture very clearly, New Testament teaches us believers, that we should be focusing the majority of our time and attention on, and that is developing our spirit man. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. Say it with me. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. Now, the other thing I told you about this little challenge for 30 days is to also start recognizing when you use the term I and you refer to yourself. I, I did this with somebody today. I had, a, had, a, had a, a, one of our church family members call us and said, I got to be out of town, pastor, and I got just want to let you know. And I said, no problem. And, and uh, they were asking me about some stuff and some things they were struggling with. And they kept saying, I'm struggling with it. I'm having a problem with this. I said, here's again, I said, this is the whole reason we're doing this series. I said, you are saying you're struggling with something that has to do with your body. So what is the first, uh, what is the, the, the uh, present tense that you're focusing on? First person, your body. You're, you're claiming I as a body. I'm struggling with it. I said, your spirit ain't struggling with this. Your spirit ain't having a battle with this. Your spirit ain't having an issue with this. Your flesh may be, but you aren't. But listen to yourself. I am battling with this. I am struggling with this. I said, I'll tell you why you're not overcoming it. Because you're not looking at the true I. You're not looking at the right person. Now listen, what I just said is a mouthful. And if you really don't think that's powerful or important, you're going to miss the whole point of this series. 
The reason that a guy like Kenneth Hagin walked in such great anointing and power is because Kenneth Hagin learned early on, I'm a spirit. And Kenneth Hagin would refer to himself in the first person all the time as a spirit being, all the time, constantly. When you go through this book of Acts and all of the New Testament, especially the letters we have written to us from Romans all the way through to the book of Jude before you get to Revelation and all these references that these disciples make about themselves, I guarantee you what, almost every single reference in the first person is the spirit man. Never the soul, never the body. But the problem is through the fall and us becoming knowledgeable of our sinful nature, Guess what we were conditioned by? We were conditioned by a fallen spirit that taught us now to, to chase after and, and go after the things of our flesh and desire the things of our flesh. So our soul got conditioned to totally gratifying the flesh than doing what the flesh wanted. This is how the fall occurred. They got their eyes off their spirit. They started looking to their flesh while well, the tree looked desirable and pleasing and, 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 and something desired, you know, to have for a uh, fruit to eat. And I'm telling you, when you start focusing on the flesh, man, you're going to get in trouble. So, and, and this is another thing too. I want to get this across to you. You're never going to overcome flesh with flesh. You're never going to do it. You're never going to defeat anything in your flesh with flesh. Meaning that if all you're referring to yourself as is in the first person, your flesh, and I got to defeat this, you're not going to if you're, if you're speaking of I being the flesh. Now, if you're talking about I, the spirit man, you'll overcome it because in your spirits, all the power, all the anointing, all the authority of God to deal with all these things on the outward, right. including your body, including your soul. But if you're trying to overcome stuff, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I was addicted to nicotine and chewing tobacco for 20 something years of my life. And for three months, I tried to beat it. I being the fleshly man. I being my soul uh, and, my, and my body. More so my soul. By a decision, I'm trying to defeat this thing in my soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions where you make these choices. And I'm trying to defeat this thing. I'm trying to overcome it. And I'm getting mad at myself. I'm getting frustrated at myself. And I'm feeling bad about myself. And I keep, no, God, I know I need to quit. But I keep, but see, I'm, I'm when I kept saying I was battling, I was referring to my soul. My, my will, my willpower. Oh, I got to overcome this thing. Man, overcome this thing. And I kept, but here's the good part. I kept crying out to God, say, don't ever stop doing that. Tell somebody, don't ever stop doing that. Jesus said, ask. What did he say? And it shall be, seek. You shall find. Knock. Door shall be open. Now the, the words ask, seek, and find are Greek imperatives, meaning that they're continuous verbs. That means you keep asking, you keep seeking, you keep knocking. This isn't, this isn't, okay, God, I'm believing for that in faith in Jesus' name. Now I'm believing again tomorrow and I'm asking. No, 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 no. This is talking about when you're seeking out direction and answers and things you need from God. Don't stop asking him. He don't get bored with you because truthfully, he's not having a hard time saying to us what the deal is. But the more you keep asking, and if you really keep seeking and you really keep knocking, you'll press beyond your flesh to get to that point to hear what God's been telling you all along. Amen. And I'm telling you, I kept, I kept, man, I kept crying out to God. I, I was, but at first I was doing the wrong thing. God, deliver me from this, to, this tobacco. Praise God. What else did God need to do to deliver me from it? Nothing. So my prayer was going nowhere because I was asking him to do something that he couldn't do because he already did it. Right? He, he doesn't, he's not going to do it. He already did it. And finally, at the end of like a three-month period, man, I'm sitting in my, in my living room, and, and I'm just sitting there, God, what do I do about this? And finally, I mean, just it came out of me. I said, Lord, show me how. I didn't ask him to deliver me. I said, show me how. Show me how to get delivered from this. You got the ability to deliver me. Show me how, Lord. Show me how. Instantly when I said that out of my mouth, the Holy Spirit nudged me. I had been on a three-month study about healing, and the Holy Spirit nudged me, and I heard in a, in a sense of a still small voice in my spirit. What do you mean heard? Not with my ears. I can't describe it to you, and that's why you got to learn to develop your spirit, man. But I heard this in my spirit, man. All you got to do is ask me to heal you. Huh? All you got to do is ask me to heal me? Heal me. What do you mean heal me? Do you believe I have the power to heal you? Yep. Heal anything in your body? Yep. Could I not deliver you from that drug? Could I not heal your body of that drug nicotine? Could I not remove it from your body? Yes, sir. Yes, you can. All you got to do is ask me to deliver you from that, from that drug. 
Man, I grabbed my can. I ran over to my kitchen. I, bowed, I got on my knees in front of that trash can in my kitchen. I opened that can. I dumped it in there. And I said, Jesus, heal my body and cleanse me of this nicotine. And most of you have heard my testimony. But the next day, man, I woke up thinking, here we go. Back to me being still in my will. Oh, God, I got to be strong. I got to be strong. I got to be. Who am I talking about? Not my spirit. My spirit's already strong as he needs to be. Where am I back to? I'm back to my will, but guess where I was the night before? I got in my spirit and I got an answer from God and I heard a word from the Lord and I released my faith and I believed God to be healed. And guess what? I got healed. Amen. And the next day, even though I went back to my will, to my soul, I got through halfway through the day I'm like, wow, I didn't even want it. Long story short, I haven't wanted it for 20 something years since. There's never been a desire, never been a craving, nothing. I didn't have to fight to get rid of it. I didn't have to fight tooth and nail to try to get rid of it. You don't overcome flesh by flesh. You don't, you'll never overcome your flesh with flesh. Your soul or your body, you've got to overcome flesh through the things of your spirit. Amen. So this is why it's so vital for us to do what? Develop our spirit, man. Man has learned how to develop his body. Man has, man and woman, just saying humans, man has learned how to develop their body. Man has learned how to develop their intellect. But very few humans have learned how to develop their spirit, man. Very few. Very few. Sad thing is, truthfully, I want you to go to Galatians 5 while I'm speaking this. You know what? There's a lot of people in the demonic realm who have learned to develop their spirits. In the demonic realm. See, developing your spirit, ladies and gentlemen, isn't just becoming godly. Developing your spirit is learning to truly recognize the spirit, guy, spirit man on the inside. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of people in witchcraft and stuff that they begin to recognize I'm a spirit. And they begin to all of a sudden fellowship with other spirits, demons, fallen angels who began to come and inhabit their spirit because they learned how to develop their spirit. Now listen, developing your spirit for God, you don't ever have to worry about no demon coming because you don't have the, you, don't, you got the Holy Spirit in you. You don't have a demonic spirit, praise the Lord. Can I get a better amen? amen. But when you develop your spirit, it's simply becoming aware of who you really are as a spirit being. And recognizing the very power of that. Now, we've touched on multiple things about this already. We left off in Galatians 5, so I want to pick that back up. I'm going to kick a few extra little verses in just for the benefit of all of you being here on a Wednesday night tonight. I want you to back up to verse 13. 513. Paul said here, for you, brethren, who's he talking to? Believers. You, brethren, have been called to what? You've been called to liberty. If you don't know about Galatians, Galatians is all about Paul dealing with these people who went back to offering all the sacrifices of the Levitical uh, law. They began to go back and bring all these blood sacrifices and start offering all these sacrifices of the Levitical law after having already heard the gospel through Paul and gotten born again. And now they're drifting back into all these, the, all these Levitical laws and Paul's dealing with them saying, you don't have to do those anymore. Jesus is your redemption. He redeemed you. He shed his blood for you. Praise the Lord. So he tells them here, you've been called to liberty. You don't have to do that. Watch this. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. Right. Now, you've been called to liberty, but that ain't a license to sin. That ain't a license to let your flesh rule you. Matter of fact, see, the whole reason why you want to develop your spirit, man, is so that your flesh don't rule you as he's about to tell, tell you. So he said, you don't use this liberty for an opportunity for the flesh, but watch this. Through love, do what? Through love, do what? I'm going to give you ahead of time because I'm such a good pastor and, you know, so good about releasing things early to you. Uh, in this series, you're going to find out several key things that will develop your spirit, man. You just read another one, walking in love. Walking in love will develop my spirit, man? Yes, it will. And I'll show you why, and I'll talk about it later. But that's why he just brought that up. Don't use this liberty for an opportunity for the flesh, but through love, through love, the love that's been shed abroad in your heart, Romans 5, 5. Through love, serve one another. Through love, serve one another. So I'm just touching on it. I'm not going there. But that's one of the key elements. That's why he brings it up. 14, for all the law, all the what? Now, 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 again, there's a lot of misconceptions about what in the world is this thing about? We're not under law, we're under grace, da, da, da. Well, there's different references, again, as to what people are referring to law. Most of these teachers say we're not under the law. Many of them aren't even referring to the Ten Commandments. They're, they might be including them, but what they're referring to that we're not under the law is anything that's of fleshly effort on your part at all, anything to obtain the things of God, that's the law. You're delivered from that. Again, faith without 
Works is, we know our flesh ain't earning nothing. But I got to have some action in the natural with what my heart says I believe. If I, how many of you know speaking is an action thing? Speaking is something you do with your flesh. Yes or no? Am I using my flesh right now to talk to you? Yeah, I'm using a part of my flesh to talk. How are you going to get born again then? How are you going to get born again? Because you have to confess with your mouth. You have to, you have, to have a physical, <laughs> a physical action to get born again. It was the belief in your heart that did it, but the actions, faith with work, the actions is what literally caused that faith to go to work for you and see God go to work for you. Could I get a better amen? amen. So I'm telling you, you got to be careful about all these, well, we're not under the law kind of thing because they're saying anything that refers to anything you do in the flesh, that's of the law. Uh, that's not always true. That's not always true. According to Scripture, it's very clear. It's amazing to me how they throw out all these other verses about perfecting holiness and the fear of God and cleansing yourself. And Anyway, we'll get there. Let's go on. The law is fulfilled in one word. What is it? It's fulfilled in one word. So this is referring to what law? Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is what he's referring to. He says, the law, Ten Commandments, is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall do what? Love your neighbors yourself. We're not under the law anymore, Pastor. Now listen, he's telling you here that very clearly you and I know nobody could uphold or keep all the Ten Commandments and go to heaven because all of us had sinned. But now that you're born again, guess what? Walk in the law of love. And the Bible says, and Jesus said it, you fulfill all the law. He didn't say you're free from it. said you fulfill it. You walk in love, you're not going to commit adultery. You walk in love, you're not going to steal anything. You walk in love, you're not going to put any gods before God. Right? right? right. Verse 15, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Who's he talking to? Believers. Remember, he started off with brethren in verse 13. Now, now that's, I, I put all that in there because now we're to verse 16 where we were at last, uh, last service. I say then, see, because of what he just said, because of what he just said. How many of you know he's telling us here, walk in love. In love, serve one another. So you don't use this liberty as an opportunity for the flesh to take control. I say then do what? Walk in the, walk in the, walk in the spirit and you shall not do what? Now, now, now don't kick me out of your thinking here. Don't, don't throw me out because I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it up front so I can show you this point from the Bible. It's not my opinion. I'm going to prove it from the Bible. It's capitalized there. But the word pneuma is the only word used in the entirety of the New Testament for spirit. There's not a separate word for Holy Spirit and then a separate word for the man, for our spirit. And there's even times that the word spirit is used in relationship to an angelic being a holy one or a bad one. And it's the same word, pneuma. So you have to, in the context, find out what kind of, what spirit is that talking about? So we got a question, is this the Holy Spirit he's talking about? Now I'm going to tell you something as you read through this, because I'm saying it up front so you'll see it as we read through it. Paul is simply using, an, he's telling you about yourself and he's showing you where the real battle is. You have a flesh, you have a spirit. And these two things are contrary. And your flesh doesn't want to do what you, spirit man, want to do. And you, spirit man, don't want to do what your flesh wants to do. So he's not, your, your battle, ladies and gentlemen, your flesh's battle is not with the Holy Spirit. It's with your spirit. So if, if this is Holy Spirit, if this is the Holy Spirit he's talking about here, then he's saying the battle is with the Holy Spirit against your flesh. But it's not. Your spirit is what's battling against your flesh. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps you overcome amen. your battle with your flesh. Amen. Could I get a better amen? amen? So this is saying, here's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with flesh, and you, but you're a spirit. And this is why he goes through these things. Listen carefully. So if I walk in the spirit, what's walking in the spirit? If I am dominated, the, the word walk here means to be occupied, governed by, occupied with governed by, if I'm occupied with me, the spirit being, who I really am, if I'm governed by me, the spirit being, I'm a spirit, you're a spirit. If you get governed by your spirit, not your soul, not your body, you get governed by your spirit. Why is this so important to understand this isn't the Holy Spirit? Because I'll guarantee you, if you think it's the Holy Spirit, somehow you're trying to learn how do I get this from the Holy Spirit? But you've already got this because you're this, we're talking about your recreated spirit 
who's been made in the image and likeness of God. For years, I used to wonder, how do you get this fruit to, do, to grow in your life? How do you get this fruit from the Holy Spirit to grow in my life? But you're going to find out that's not how it works. That fruit's in your spirit. Amen. That fruit's in there. It's a part of who you are. Can I get a better amen? amen? So he goes on and says, walk in the spirit. What's that mean again? I am governed by my spirit, who I really am. If you're governed by your spirit, who you really are, guess what you won't do? You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, he's not saying governed by the Holy Spirit. He's talking about your spirit. If your spirit is the dominating factor here, guess what ain't going to control you? Your flesh, right? If it's, if it's my spirit that's the governor of my life, that that's who I'm, I love this occupied with, one of the definitions. I am occupied with who I really am. We say all the time, well, you don't want to get focused on self. You do if it's the real you. Amen. I said, you do if it's the real you. You won't get occupied with the real you because the real you's been made in the image and likeness of God. The real you's an heir of God. The real you's a joint heir with Jesus. The real you has been raised up together. The real you has been seated together with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Well, I thought we're supposed to look to Jesus. Yeah, you look to Jesus for all the direction and help you need, but who's the you looking to Jesus? Who's the you? It's your spirit, not your soul, not your body. It's your spirit, man. Come on, church. I'm telling you, when this becomes knowledgeable revelation to your heart, to your spirit, man, that now all of a sudden you realize, I'm not trying to pluck fruit from the Holy Spirit here. I already got that fruit. It's in me. And I'll show you how to start growing it. But, but again, you got to be governed by your spirit. Here's the key. Remember I told you you can't overcome flesh with flesh? How do you overcome your flesh? Obey your spirit. Obey your spirit. If I brought up, and I won't do it for the sake of time, two people, one's over here, one's over here again. If, if, let's say if, if me, the will, the soul of Daryl, is looking to the spirit, and now the spirit is telling the soul what to do, that, I'm not even paying attention to my flesh. This ain't hard to figure out. It's real simple. How do you, over, how do you not give in to the flesh? I choose, as you'll see in a minute, to renew my mind to now see I'm a spirit being, and therefore, I'm going to focus all my attention now as a soul on recognizing, oh, okay, I'm not, the, I'm not the dominant one. The Spirit's the dominant one here. So I look to the Spirit. Well, guess what? If you walk governed by the Spirit inside you, you won't fulfill the... And the word lust of the flesh means that which is not right with the sight of, in the sight of God. That which is forbidden, actually what it says, that which is forbidden by God. How many know there's things that obviously are desires of the flesh that are forbidden by God? So how do you overcome these forbidden elements of the flesh? You get governed by your spirit. It's that simple. How do you get governed by your spirit? You got to grow your spirit, man. You got to develop him. Got to develop that spirit, man. You develop that spirit, man, to be the dominating factor. And ladies and gentlemen, you ain't going to have a lot of fleshly problems because you ain't going to be looking to the flesh. The reason that most of the believers in the body are not walking in the liberty of not being dominate, dominated by this old fleshly man that's going to lead you astray is because they have never understood nor developed themselves to see themselves as a spirit being. And if you don't develop this understanding in this spirit man, you're going to keep looking to that flesh. And he's going to dominate. Much is in your heart because that's your spirit. You don't want to, which is what he's about to tell you. That's what's going to happen. 17, the flesh lusts against what? Spirit. What does it lust against? Spirit. The Holy Spirit? No. Your spirit. Because he's talking about you. Your flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are what? They are contrary. They're contrary to one another. So that notice this you, circle the word you. Circle it. Who you? Your spirit. Not your soul, not your body. You, your spirit man. So that you, the spirit man, do not do the things that circle it. You wish. See, if you've ever read over this and never been confused before, I don't understand. The flesh is against the spirit, spirit against the flesh. I don't want to do them. Then why do I do them? Because you're not seeing yourself as a spirit. You missed that point. I'm going to say it again. See, a lot of people have read that. Okay, okay, all right. So my flesh is against the Spirit. But we're thinking Holy Spirit, see? We're not even putting us in the equation. All right, so the flesh is against the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit against the flesh. 
And, and the flesh being contrary to the spirit makes me do things I don't want to do. Well, if I don't want to do them, why do I do them? Because you're thinking of yourself as a fleshly being, not a spirit. But the you he's referring to here is not the Holy Spirit. He's talking about you, the spirit being. You, the spirit being, don't want to do. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, oh, Jesus, help us. If you ever get a revelation of this, if you ever really grab a hold of this, it'll change your life. I guarantee it'll be the greatest thing. It'll be the, it'll be the most powerful thing that's ever brought change in your life as a Christian you can name on the planet. Ever, ever, ever. If you can really get a hold of the fact you're a spirit being, really get a hold of that truth. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I live in a body. And start being governed by that, that spirit, who you really are. You, again, you're not going to have any more issues overcoming the flesh. Everything that has to do with what we battle with in the flesh has to do with us not looking to who we are in the spirit. Could I get a better amen? You've got to get a hold of this fact. I am a spirit. And because I am a spirit, why is this so important? Here's my point. Here's what I wanted to get to. It's so important because you don't have any evil thoughts in you. You don't have any unholy thoughts in you. You don't have any unholy desires in you. But see, I guarantee you what, most of us still beat ourselves up. Oh, man, I'm thinking those bad thoughts again. Oh, man, I'm, oh, I'm just no good, Lord. Oh, I'm just, uh, I wish I could be more holy. I wish I could be more like Jesus. See, who are you talking about? Who you are you talking about? You're talking about your flesh. You're talking about the fleshy man that could never become like Jesus, this side of heaven. It ain't going to happen. Your flesh is going to stay your flesh until he comes back and gives you a new body or you go home and be with the Lord. Amen. Then you'll be separated from it. I like a better amen. amen. But if, you'll grab, if you ever get this revelation of you being a spirit being, here's what comes with it. I don't have any unholy thoughts in me. I don't have any unholy desires in me. My flesh and me are contrary to one another. Everything that stinking flesh wants to do that's wrong with God, I don't want to do it. So it's not me wanting to do it. It's not me wanting to do that. I don't want to sin. I don't want to do things that's going to hurt my life. I don't want to do things that's going to hurt my family. I don't want to do things that's going to hurt my church. I don't want to do things that's going to hurt other people around. I don't want to do those things. Those aren't my thoughts. Those aren't my feelings. Those aren't my attitudes. Those aren't my desires. Some of you will wake up to this about next week. But when you get a hold of this, all of a sudden, all because now what you begin to recognize is when you start having all these things that Satan tries to bring up against you and throw at your face and stuff, well, you know, God couldn't heal you, not after the way you talked to your spouse the other day. Uh, I didn't talk to him that way. Satan, I didn't talk to him that way. Yes, you did. I heard you. No, I didn't. My flesh did. And I made the mistake of turning back towards my flesh. But you know what? I repented. I did not want to do that. Amen. I did not want to do that. Amen. I said, I did not want to do that. Amen. Well, God can't heal you. Yeah, he can. Because I, the spirit being him holy, I, the spirit being him perfect, I, the spirit being him righteous in the sight of God. And because I know that, I also know that I have the authority to take, exercise the authority over my body to receive my healing. If you have a tough time with that, I have a question for you. Who in Jesus' ministry got healed that even has what you have? None of them had a right spirit. They all had an evil nature in them. But they just believed he could do it. Now, you don't believe he can do it. You believe he did it. Could I get a better amen? So he says, yes, this flesh is contrary to your spirit, your spirit contrary to the flesh, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Well, how do I stop doing those things? Be governed by you. Be governed by you. What? Be governed by you. The more you're governed by you, the less you're going to walk in the flesh. Some of you are getting it. I see some smiles on the faces. The rest of you are still scratching your head. Uh, 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, who, what Spirit? What spirit? spirit? It's still talking about your Spirit now. Could we include the Holy Spirit? Sure, because He's living inside me. He's the one I receive godly direction from. But this is a comparison of your Spirit and your flesh. Amen. If you're led, that word led, governed, controlled by the Spirit, guess what? You're not under the law. What? 
Oh, see, there you go. We're not under the law. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know why he says you're not under the law? I'll tell you why. You won't violate any of the law. You won't violate it. If you walk in what your spirit, what you as spirit being uh, know to be true, you the spirit being that's holy and right in the sight of God, you're not going to violate any of God's laws. You're going to walk in love. You're going to walk in the fruit of the spirit. You walk in the fruit of the spirit, you're not violating any law. Hello? It's like having the perfect car that never breaks the speed limit. That it couldn't break the speed limit if it tried. Well, if you had a vehicle that could never break the speed limit, no matter how hard it tried, you're not under the law. Because you're never going to break it. You're never going to violate it. Your spirit man obviously is not going to ever go contrary to the laws of God. He's never going to. So if you're led by your spirit, you're not under the law. But the new modern day teacher, yeah, see, there you go. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Praise the Lord. They don't even know what they're talking about. This is saying, no, there's no, I'm not under any law anymore if I walk by my spirit because I'm not going to violate any of the law. Amen. Tell somebody, I'm not even going to get a ticket. Praise the Lord. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Tell them that I'm not even going to get a warning. <laughs> your, your spirit ain't even going to get you a warning. I'm serious. Say, praise the Lord. Now watch this, watch this. 18, if you're, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. 19, now here's the works of the flesh. So here's what, here's what manifests as a parts of the flesh. I, it, you ought to obviously, you know, they're evident, which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I have also told you in times past, that those who practice such things, now, again, this is the verses that, as Pastor referred to. This is one of the ones we've been told to cut out of our Bible because we're told this doesn't refer to us. Is Paul talking about your flesh or not? Whose flesh is he talking about? But I will tell you, a very famous modern-day preacher said, he is not talking to believers here. He's meandering about the law before Jesus ever came, quote-unquote. Paul's talking about your flesh and the stuff in your flesh that ain't no good. But Paul's giving the answer how your flesh don't have to rule you anymore and you can change your flesh. You can fix your fleshly man on the outside. Can I get a better amen? amen. Tell somebody. He's preaching way better than you're amen tonight. I know, I know, I know Dr. Barclay wore you down a little bit. That's all right. I understand. I'll give you a little grace for that. Praise the Lord. So he says clearly that those who practice such things. Now, practice means you're wanting to get good at it. He, he did not say here, now those who haven't received Christ practice such things and will not inherit the kingdom of God. Last part of verse 20. He never threw that in there. He said, if you practice these things, see, I, we were talking pastor yesterday at lunch. I said, you know, pastor, I said, to me, the once saved, always saved doctrine has been a major part of what has sparked this whole problem in the body of Christ. Because if you believe once saved, always saved, what a convenient doctrine. What a wonderful, convenient doctrine. I'm saved. So therefore, does it really matter what I do? Not if you're, not if you're never going to ever have any situation that's ever going to cost you of your salvation. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can anybody take your salvation from you? I get, all the, you know, I get all the challenges. Jesus said nobody can snatch you out of his hand. Exactly right. Absolutely. Nobody can take me away from Jesus. But Jesus didn't say I can't turn around and walk away from him. Amen. He just said nobody can make that decision for me. Nobody can cause that to happen but me. Amen. Good. Right? Amen. Why could your name get blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life, Church at Sardis? Church at Sardis? Church at Sardis? If you don't repent. Amen. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, how, how, could we have, how could we have knowledge that our salvation is secure? All right, real simple, real simple. Watch this, watch this. If you are in this room right now and you have no desire to practice, meaning you want to get really good at sin, if you have no desire to get really good at sin, you have no desire to get really good at sin, raise your hand, just raise your hand. You got absolute eternal security. Because this is talking about people who want to get good at it. They want to practice it and they want to get real good at it. And they know what they're doing is wrong, and they don't care. They're going to live out their life the way they want to according to the flesh, even though, as Hebrews says it this way, they've tasted the heavenly gift and become partakers, the Bible says, of that gift. 
but they keep living in a practicing of sin, trampling the blood of Jesus underfoot, the Bible says, treating it like a common thing. See, I love what Dr. Barclay preaches. This is why I love having a good pastor over my life because he said it for years, man. Jesus didn't just come to forgive you of your sin. Jesus came to deliver you of your sin. I'll say that again in case you miss it. He didn't just come to forgive you. He came to deliver you of it by giving you a brand new spirit to be controlled by and overcome it. Now, again, you're going to try to overcome sin in your flesh. Sin will defeat you. You can't beat flesh with flesh. You get focused on who you are as a spirit being. Walk in the spirit and guess what because if you're walking in the spirit you know what i'm saying and i know man this would never happen but if you're walking in the spirit and a guy like sheffield who i say i didn't know you know was out on the street and he's just a blatant sinner and like if a guy like sheffield came up to me and i mean just got in my face you know and really kind of got on me you know what i'm saying for no reason at all if i'm walking in my spirit is my spirit going to punch him back yeah. is my flesh going to want to yeah. oh yeah is my flesh going to want to retaliate yeah. but if i listen to my spirit what's my spirit going to say walk in love Walk in love. See, I'm not going to violate what God's word says if I'm being governed by my spirit. Can I get a better amen? The key here, ladies and gentlemen, just so we're clear, because I don't want any confusion on verse 21. These are people who practice such things. Practice me. What, what do you go practice, man? Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, any, any, uh, there, it's not going to happen because I'll tell you what. We know we, we pray for protection, but now we're really protected. Anybody showed up at our house and I wasn't home? God, God help the man that would face this, this sharpshooting woman <laughs> with, a, with a new 9 millimeter Smith & Wesson. Amen. I'll tell you what, she was practicing and nailing that target, man. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Whoa, Kathy, wow, man, check you out. Boom, boom, boom. Of course, we had a good instructor, but boom, boom. I mean, she just hit that target. First time she shot it, you know, because the percussion in there is pretty, pretty, you know, it's not the gun. It's not actually the kick. It's just the percussion sound. We're in an indoor range, you know what I'm saying? And she jumped back, man. She's like, boom. She goes, oh, like that, you know, first time. But by the end, man, she just standing there, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> You'd have been proud, Caleb. She did good. That's practice. So, you know what? We're going to keep going and practicing that because there ain't nothing wrong with that. But see, these are talking about people who want to practice getting good at this kind of stuff. That's not us. Because a lot of people say, you got no eternal security. I got lots of eternal security. I have no desire to practice sin, none at all, none whatsoever. 22, but the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of your human spirit. If you don't believe this, go look up every single one of these fruit in the New Testament. You'll find out they've been given to your spirit. You'll find a verse for them, every one of them. So the, what's the very first one? Love. I'll just prove Romans 5, 5, the love of God has been shed abroad. Where? Listen carefully. In your hearts, your spirit, by the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of people just thought, yeah, the love's in there because the Holy Spirit's in there. No, 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 no. The love's in there because the Holy Spirit put it in there. You didn't hear me. It's not in there just because the Holy Spirit's in there. The love of God's in your heart, your spirit, because the Holy Spirit put it in your spirit. It's a part of your spirit being. If you have been born again, you have been recreated in the image and in the likeness of God as we read about in Genesis. Is God love? Yes. What are you? Love. Is God joy? Yes. What are you? Joy. Is God peace? Yes. What are you? Yes. Yeah, is God long-suffering? Yes. Yeah, what are you? Long See, God's all these things, Amen. and so are you, because you have his exact same DNA in your nature, in your spirit being. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Again, listen, against such there is what? There is no law because you're not going to violate anything, right? And those who are Christ's have crucified what? What have they done? If, if I really have given my entire being to Christ... To obey him, do what his word says, then I have done what? I have crucified my flesh. He didn't say if you're born again. If you are his totally, if you've given yourself totally over to him, spirit, soul, and body, to walk out what this Bible teaches and develop relationship and do what God says, you're Christ. You've crucified the flesh. Why? How do you crucify the flesh? Walk in the spirit. You're going to be governed by your spirit. 
You've crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, that simply means if you have this new life in your spirit, then what should we do? Walk in that spirit, man. That's what that verse says. It's literally saying, all right, God put this new life in you, your new spirit. So if he put that new life in you, why don't you take advantage of it? Why don't you walk in it? Why would, why would you let God give you something that you're not going to use? Right? He gave you this life of this brand new spirit. So let that be the one that dominates you, who you really are. Walk in him. That, think about it. What, here's another way of saying it. Paul's not saying you prayed the prayer, you got the ticket to heaven, praise the Lord. Just get through life, praise God, and thank God you're going to heaven. That's not what he said. He's saying if you've got that new life, then walk in that new life. Walk in that spirit man. Why would you want to go through hell on earth letting your flesh dominate you and mess with you and, and the devil take advantage of you because you don't know your rightful place of authority as a child of God because you don't really know who you are. You're still referring to yourself as a soul or a body. Why would you want to go through all that when Jesus died and paid a dear price, not just, quote, unquote, for you to go to heaven? Honest truth, that's the least of what Jesus did. Oh, I can't believe he said that. If you think that the main reason Jesus died was to get you to heaven, you haven't read the Bible. The main reason Jesus died was to restore you back into an intimate relationship with the Father so that you could begin to walk in that relationship now and begin to dominate and become more than a conqueror and walk in the victory Jesus Christ gave you here on earth. Not when you get heaven's, hey man, heaven's, heaven's easy street. There ain't no problem dealing with anything in heaven. There ain't no problems to deal with. But we're not going to experience the benefit of what he died and paid for here. Heaven's the icing on the cake. Can I get a better amen? So you and I got to realize what's the real meat of what we got in a relationship with God? It's not heaven. It's walking with him here on earth. It's walking out what we have as a new, new being here on earth. Could I get a better amen? John 15. Now, let me just throw in these other verses I mentioned and referred to them. Let me just show them to you real quick just to show you again that clearly what he's referring to there is your spirit, not the Holy Spirit, your spirit and your flesh. Why is that so important to understand, Pastor? Because again, I'm going to make this point and we're going to finish with this tonight, uh, this key point. Number one, if you didn't get it already, okay? So how, well, here's the question, Pastor. How do I walk in, how do I walk in the fruits of the spirit? You develop your spirit, man. See, for years we've wondered, how do I do that? How do I get those fruits coming out of my life? You develop your spirit, man. Because if you develop your spirit, man, guess what starts dominating? Spirit. Guess what starts dominating? Spirit. Your spirit. What's in your spirit? Love. Guess what starts dominating? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faithfulness. All these things start manifesting because that's what's now governing your life. Walking in the fruit of the Spirit is simply developing your spirit man. When he starts dominating, darling, you're going to start walking in the fruit of the Spirit. It's that simple. John 15 tells us this. 15.4, we'll cut right to the chase. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. Abide in me and what? I in you. As the branch, the what? Branch cannot bear fruit of itself. What bears fruit? The branch does. And it cannot bear fruit of itself unless it does what? Abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Five, I'm the vine. Say, Jesus is the vine. You, circle it, circle it, you. Who you? Spirit man, which is now being referred to as a branch. Your soul doesn't get born again. Your body doesn't get born again. When you abide in Jesus, you get born again. Who are you? The spirit man, who Jesus is now referring to as a branch in this analogy. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears, bears, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. What do you mean abide in him? Listen, we stay focused on him and connected to him and he must, he must be what? Uh, be abiding in us. Is that just being born again? Actually, no. It's meaning that he is coming alive in us. He is the word. Say he is the word. 
Now, I could prove this more with these verses and some others. I don't have time to go there. But abiding in him means simply this. I'm going to live in the word, which is Jesus. As I do and I meditate on it, it's going to teach me who I am, a spirit being. And as I begin to get revelation, that word starts coming alive in me, who I really am. And you start bearing fruit. Did you get that point? If I abide in him, he is the word. Jesus is the word. John 1. Right? Jesus said it in John 16, 63, the next chapter. He went on in his talk in this actual time that he was ministering to people. And he said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit. And they are life. If I live in this book to get to know Jesus and me... Because I've told you this for years. If you get to know Jesus, who else are you going to get to know? You. You. You're a joint heir with him. Amen. As I get to know him, I get to know me, and I'm abiding in his word. And as I'm abiding in his word, and his word begins to come alive in me. What do you mean his word begins to come alive in me? I begin to wake up to who I really am. I begin to realize I'm really a spirit. I really am made in the image of God. I really am made in his likeness. I really do have that authority. I really do not have in me any evil desire. I really do not have in me any evil thoughts. I really do not have in me anything contrary to God because I'm a spirit. Boy, when that starts coming alive in you, you'll start bearing fruit. Because your body, excuse me, your spirit man will dominate. Your body will be pushed to the side. And guess what will start plopping out, ladies and gentlemen? Guess what will start plopping out? He didn't say the Holy Spirit's going to plop out fruit. The Holy Spirit's not the branch. You're the branch. You're, who's you the branch? Who you? Spirit man. Did you get this point? Oh, I hope you got it. I really hope you got it. Live in this book because you want to get to know him and get to know you who you are. As you get to know him and get to know you are, that word starts coming alive in you. It's not, hey, alive in you means you begin to wake up inside to your spirit man. It's not just a bunch of head knowledge in my brain. I'm going to give you another one just because I've got to. I'm going to throw out another little tidbit of how you build your spirit, how you develop your spirit man. You must feed on the word of God. Feeding is not reading. You can't feed without reading. Well, once you've read the Bible, abide in the Word. That Word's got to abide in you. It's got to come alive in you. you got to feed on it to get it alive in you. I'll, I'll go into details later. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there so you understand because you're going to see this later. But that's what this is saying here. If I live in the Word, not because I have to, not because it's some religious exercise i got to go through, I really want to get to know God. Amen. I really want to get to know the Lord. As I get to know him, I get to know me. And all of a sudden, he starts abiding in me. Abide means to come alive, to come alive in you. All of a sudden, that word starts coming alive in me. Guess what? Man, I start realizing who I really am. Fruit starts popping out. You can't get me mad all of a sudden anymore. All, I, all you can get me to do is love on you. You can't wipe the smile off my face. Some of you, we really need to develop our spirit, man. Praise the Lord. Can't wipe that smile off your face. Can't get rid of the peace that's just manifesting out through your life, man. Amen. You're long-suffering. Like Jesus, how long must I be with you? You have self-control. I said you have self-control. On and on I could go. Did you see that point? So realize Galatians 5 is saying, guys, that this is an issue between your spirit and your flesh. If you get governed by your spirit, I'll guarantee you the flesh ain't going to be a problem. And you'll start seeing the fruit in your spirit manifest. You'll start bearing much fruit. It'll start popping out. Right? Because what? He's becoming, that word's coming alive in me of who I really am. All right? Ephesians 4. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woohoo. Ephesians 4. I've been thinking a lot about my spiritual dads the last several weeks. Really missing some. Ephesians chapter 4. All right, we'll pick this up Sunday, but I want to finish here for tonight. Ephesians 4, 17. Ephesians 4, 17. Because you just keep seeing Paul hammering the same stuff over and over and over again, trying to get us to get it uh, through different letters that he's written to different churches, obviously helping all the churches to understand this. 4, 17. 
Paul said, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you, circle it, who you. Now, this is referring to your primarily your spirit, but it also is actually including your entire being here, as you're about to see. That you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility, in the futility of their mind. So see, this is referring to the entire being here, still governed by the spirit, but now he's including the soul because you, child of God as a spirit being, should not be devoid of truth in your soul. It's another way to say it. Paul's saying you, spirit being, should not be devoid of truth. The word futility means devoid of truth. He shouldn't be like Gentiles who don't know God, devoid of truth. Why are Gentiles devoid of truth? They don't know God. Amen? Jesus is the truth. 18, having their understanding darkened. Why? Because their spirit's fallen. Their spirit's been darkened. They have sin. They're alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that's in them, because of the blindness of their heart, because their heart has no light in it. That's, that's not you, though. He's saying you, sh that sh you shouldn't be living like this anymore. 19, who, that's still speaking about those who don't know Jesus, who being past feeling, past feeling, have given themselves over now to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Look at 20, but you have not so learned Christ. This is not what you've been taught. If indeed you've heard him, what Jesus has actually said, not just some preacher. You missed that point. Unless you've heard him. Heard who? Jesus, capital H. What has Jesus actually said? Not just what some preacher said Jesus may have said. Right. It's shocking to me that, again, a very well-known preacher uh, last year actually stood up in a meeting that we happened to know a great senior minister was there and literally said that when Jesus talked to the rich young ruler and the rich young ruler started walking off, he said, Jesus blew that right there. He messed that up. Because if he'd have gone after him and explained what he was really saying, they'd have had a multitude of people right there coming to the kingdom of God. I'm not joking. We now have a minister who's saying, Jesus, you missed it there. And I ain't telling you his name because I ain't slandering him. But he's very popular. He's very famous, very well known. This, this stuff is going on everywhere, folks. See, it's not what some minister said. It's what, it's what we've learned from Jesus. What did Jesus say? Don't even take it. Don't even take it for granted because your pastor said it. Dear God, please don't. You make sure the Bible says it. Could I, could I get a better amen? I trust my pastor very well because I know he's a spiritual man of God, loves God, walks holy, and lives according to the Bible and serve God all these years. I don't question a whole lot what he says. I still look it up in the scriptures because I want to get it in my heart. So again, you've not learned Christ if you've heard him and if you've been and you've been taught by who? By him. By the word is another way you could say it. You've been taught by the word. As the truth is in Jesus. That you put off. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which goes corrupt according to the deceitful lust. In other words, you're not supposed to let that old nature now dominate any longer because it's not in you. Number, uh, verse 23, and, and here's how you do it. Be renewed. Everybody say, and be renewed. Amen. Let me let me back up. Excuse me. Verse 22, you put off concerning your, concerning your what? Your former conduct. You got to do something about your former conduct. Now, we'll get into detail of that on, on Sunday. So that's why I wanted to bring it up. We'll pick this back up here. 23, and you got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And so that you will do what? Put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Glory be to God. How do I do that? You got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I'm now making my key number one point about how you develop your spirit man. You must become spirit conscious. You must become spirit conscious. To be renewed in the spirit of your mind means you've got to have your mind renewed to the point you understand I'm a spirit. Did you get my point? I'm going to read the verse to you again. He said, you need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Say renewed in the spirit of my mind. What's that mean? You got to be renewed in your mind that you're a spirit being. 
Your mind don't have a spirit. I said, your mind don't have a spirit. And when you look these words up in the Greek language, Paul's saying, you must be renewed in your mind to understand I am a spirit. And that's what will dominate your life. We pray that you are blessed by the message Pastor Baker shared with you today. For more spiritual resources that can help you in your walk with God, or to invite Pastor Baker as a guest speaker, just go to our website at cffchurch.com. You will find additional teachings by video, audio, and printed resources that will be a blessing to you. May God's very best be yours.